In the beginning, uh, a long time ago, uh, at Hollybrook Elementary, uh, a kid was shot in the playground. Uh, we know because there was blood on the near the tire swing thing. And it, uh, I'd say about 25 years ago. So I'm not that old, but I can remember the feeling in the neighborhood because, you know, we used to fight and we used to all sorts of badness in that neighborhood. Uh, and I'm talking about near Hollybrook, if you don't know where that is because you're new, it's down the street in some ways. Um, there was something that had to be done. Uh, and there was a preoccupation with the parents and the students and the teachers because it was on the playground of the school. I mean, they washed it off. There was still blood running down the streets. Uh, but the teachers and the principals came together and they uh, made a plan. Uh, two of my favorite people in my life, uh, Karen, uh, she was a music teacher, and Mr. Roy Ford, he was a principal at the time. And with, I mean, they're not even the only ones. They're just the ones that kind of were the catalyst for all this. Uh, Mr. Berger, who works at uh, Cornerstone, and Ms. Valerie Johnson, who works at uh, Northbrook Middle School. I mean, this is the people who made this change. Together uh, with uh, Padrino, who, uh, if I call him, he'll come. They started an after-school program. Um, it kind of worked. We, we were there all the time. Uh, as a kid, yay high, you know, we, we had nowhere else to go. And Karen had a place for us to play, and there's all sorts of planning that involved because they had like parent night, the games, they had kid things, they had baseball, I was on the Little League. I mean, it was things that we never got to do. And because of these people, there was change. And we were happy. And then we got over. And as you know, some things are great for a certain amount of time, and you can only invest so much time of your own time because it's a lot of time. Um, pretty soon, Karen went bankrupt, and I, we still make fun because it's, it was a long way in trying to get out of that hole just for her because she provided nachos and candy and whatever we needed, Karen was there for us. Um, Roy, uh, interesting enough, as a principal, he got the community engaged and some people didn't want the community engaged. They were happy that we didn't say anything, that we were just kind of in our rut. When you get community engaged, it involves going to the admin building and saying, hey, stuff's going on, can you help us? And Roy took buses of people in the neighborhood to the admin building and they didn't like that. So things got changed in a negative way because it's sooner or later the teachers and the principals, everybody disappeared. And then everything that we worked on, or they worked on, disappeared. So we were back to square one. And as an older middle school, high school student now, I was like, well, what now? Um, it died. Uh, and high school, um, when I was in high school, Miss Dempsey, who's still at Northbrook, who, bless her soul, she's tried so much to, to get us to do things then. So as high school students, uh, I volunteered because that's what I did, I still do, and that's who I'm always going to be. And there was a bunch of nerdy kids who just, that's what we did. We went to run-a-thons, wash a -thons. We, we were everywhere, but there was still my neighborhood who still needed help, and there was no one there because of a lack of uh, leadership. Um, and thus, those good kids who we have every year and every year, they, they kind of replace themselves. They, they move on to the next step. And I can tell you from a first-hand experience, my friends and I, we moved on to the next step and we were the same kids. We were just older and we volunteered there. Um, let's see. It was, it was very happy for me. Uh, doing volunteer work was naturally in me. Uh, when I was in San Diego in the Navy, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have family. I had me and my roommates. And well, you can only hang out with guys so long. One day we were playing football and the YMCA was at the park. I said, well, what are y'all doing? They're like, well, we got stuff. We need people to do stuff with us. I got time. I got nothing but time. So they signed me up with a, a family and I tutored them in reading. Now, I'm not a reading helper, but surprisingly enough, the mother cooked dinner every night. And that was a bonus. Um, so in the end, uh, I'm here now. And I was approached uh, five years ago by Karen, who's still in the neighborhood, 
and a man named Kenny Baldwin, and he said, we are, we have money. Uh, Chapelwood, which is down the street Memorial, they uh, partner with a lot of schools in the neighborhood. Uh, they mentor throughout the district. They mentor at Springwood Middle School, where I was at. They mentor at Hollybrook. They, I mean, if you, if you have anything of worth around the neighborhood nowadays, Chapel's got their hands in it somehow. And Kenny's partnered with them, and he said, we have money, we want to build a baseball program, which lo and behold is dear to my heart, which we had 20 years ago, but it went bankrupt two years later because Karen couldn't afford 300 kids. And they didn't have a home, they didn't have a field, they didn't have baseball gloves or bats or balls or kids, they didn't have anything. It was just like, this is an idea, but we have money. And we've been promised stuff before, which is the warning when you, you know, get stuff, and you're like, well, this is what I want you to do with it. I had now become an advocate for the neighborhood because we told them this is what you want, this is who we are, this is what we're going to take. We're not willing to take your plan, we want our neighborhood's plan. Um, let's see, over time, uh, this five year progression of what's happened since Kenny came to us, Kenny, even Karen couldn't handle old Kenny. She said, I can't handle that man. You run, you are now it. I need you to follow this path and take what's going to happen. Um, we built the field. It's gorgeous. I mean, I can go out there right now and just, just bask in the glory of this field that's more special to me than anything else that I've ever been given in my life. Because I, wasn't, I didn't have much as a kid. And when uh, Cal Ripken Jr. came out last year to, to sit on my baseball field talking to our neighborhood about things that he had given us, I mean, Cal Ripken Jr. He came from Virginia to 8655 Pittner to build me a field. And it, 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 mean, it, it chokes me up just thinking about all the change that's not going to happen because of what's there. Uh, this is Coach uh, Chris on our field. Uh, this is our college size field. It's turf. It's nicer than the turf at Tully. And you, we all know how Tully's turf is super awesome. Well, this is nicer than that. Uh, we uh, work baseball. But even though it's baseball, it's engagement with the community, it's tutoring, it's activities, it's soccer, because obviously this neighborhood does not play baseball that much. But it's turf, so you can do whatever you want on it. Um, last year, uh, I don't even know who gave us all these bikes, but we gave them away. It, it's hard to tell who gives us stuff nowadays, because there's a center point and a focus to better the neighborhood, and people just want to help. Uh, I know that J.J. Watt was at the Boys and Girls Club this year as well, giving away bicycles. And we gave away nine this year as opposed to the 200 we gave away last year. And these are the kids that are involved. Um, not just the itty bitties, but the big ones. Uh, Jesus, Hope, and Odell, well, that's Odalis and, and Pony from Northbrook. Uh, the, the three on the, on the right, on the mountain left, uh, they've been with me since eighth grade. I called them out there when I was called out there. I said, I need you to dig in the dirt with me. And they have been digging in the dirt and building this behind us since day one. We, uh, we are a Christian organization. Uh, as much as that kind of iffy and great ground with some people, there, there's, it's not like we come in there and beat them down with Jesus, but there is some hope with that. You give them a little bit of religion, you give them a little bit of the hope that, you know, I'm a Christian and this is a Christian-based group, I'm okay with that. I won't come and say it in my classroom, but when I'm out there, you know, that's who I am. And you'll notice it's not just the little kids. Uh, my high schoolers in here, they come and help me on Fridays as well. And we throw the balls and roll the balls and they chase and it big or small depending on the day and how the weather. And they're happy. And this is uh, Jesus, I think, uh, Jesus, I think he's a Garcia as well. And he plays here at, at Spring Woods. Um, I've got some links here. Let me go through this and uh, we'll finish with some pictures and some video. And the most important thing is, this isn't going anywhere. Uh, $3 million field partnered with Chapelwood and Calgary from Junior Foundation. It's forever. No one's going to take it from us. No one's going to move it away. No one's going to say, you don't deserve it anymore. We built a place for hope. Um, so, this is like the next step. So, um, why am I telling you this? Um, some of you, uh, it's, it's an activity just like anything else. The kids are engaged. My kids, I will run into the hallway and, Mr., when, am I, when is the next thing? When, when can I help? Random kids, I don't even know. I, I get text messages because my phone number's out there somewhere. 
Um, the ga engagement increases. Uh, people are my my bad students. I've, I've been I've invited them out sometimes, and uh, they hang out with the good students, and then they're like, "Well, this is this is not so bad. It could be worse. We're having fun." Um, it, it, behavior improves. Overall, this is all is worth it. I mean, I know that this weekend alone, I zoned out Sunday afternoon because I was done. I was Friday at work, uh, Saturday I did work. I did three projects on Saturday alone. And then Sunday around came around and I said, you know what, I need y'all to go do this by yourself. And they could, because they had the right connections. Um, some of y'all are going to come up here and you're going to pretend I'm not talking to you because you would do enough work. That's, that's fine. Uh, I'm not here to tell you you're bad people because you just don't do what I do. I mean, it's ridiculous the amount of stuff that I do. But you could do a little more. And by more, I mean you already do what you already do. I'm asking for a little bit more than that. And I already asked myself that much. It's sometimes it's, it's hard to tell a group of you that I need a little bit more. Because the, 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 the work that I do impacts so much. Imagine if you just did a little bit more. Um, it's not going to, uh, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. I don't need you to thank me. I'm, I'm, I'm good. My mom says I'm awesome already. Um, start small. Start with yourself. Start with your family. You don't need to do it with me. Uh, help your neighbor. It, it's part of the, in, in my book, you know, it, it's, a, it's a personal mission. Your personal mission might just be your neighbor. Might just be he feels responsible just like I do. So nowadays when I run into the hallway, he says, you know, I don't care about the hours. I don't need the hours. I want to know how my kids are doing. And those are kids who have, from day one, accepted this, their role. All of this makes our community better from day one. And we're all happy that there is hope for the change. You know, there was, there was the begin the catalyst, and then there was the journey. And then there was some backlash, and now, when I continue with this mission, I mean, I'm only 30, and it's going to go on for a long time, because it's not going to go anywhere. There's also Jesus, Brenda, and Dallas, and Rudy, they are my gang of workers who have been with since day one. They, they love their work, even if they can't ride bicycles. And this is transformed to what I've done this year. This year alone, we've done over 200 projects. Sometimes it doubles itself over. Like recently, it's I haven't scheduled through prom, and they they just don't know what's coming up next. These are kids, the regular kids. Uh, in the middle here, we've got uh, Rachel, Genesis, and and Perla, and that group of girls is amazing. They're not they're not up here, but they're certainly not down here. And in my book, they're number one because they they started this. Pastor, we're going to go to the beach. I need you to make an excuse for me to skip work. I'm like, whoa, go to the beach and clean the beach. I'm all for that. And they bring their little brothers and sisters. We call people for voting. Uh, Northbrook, I, I go over to Northbrook uh, for collegiate night because I can't do it here because it's during an intervention and I have class. And those kids have joined in. And it becomes an effort to do all sorts of stuff. They're happy and engaged to ride ponies that I don't even want to do. Uh, Christmas time, the girls, these girls, they donated their own money to feed 200 people that are homeless. Their own money. They, uh, I asked them, well, do you want the whole group to pay for this? Because we've got, you know, 35 kids will get $5 each. And they said, no, this is our day. We want to give our money from work to feed the homeless. Um, feeding basketball girls, sophomores. Uh, we went down to the Capitol building to protest for education. They do color runs. They get kind of messy. Watch your cars. Uh, we, were, we went down to San, uh, Sanchez High School this weekend to help paint and scrub and all sorts of... And they were just excited with Starbucks, uh, Spring Spirit. This is what we're looking for. Little kids to make their world better because who knows where he'd be if he, we weren't out there. I think that the thing that got me the most this year is because I asked myself to do a little bit more and then a parent came up to me and asked me for more. She said to me, I was at the football game, she said, Mr. Casper, so let me get this straight. My daughter is downtown feeding the homeless on Saturday. Where are you? 
And I had assigned this and the girls were going. But I was at home sleeping. Because, I mean, Saturday morning at 5 is early. Even for a teacher, I mean, Friday is happy hour day and then Saturday is sleeping in day. <laughs> so that parent said, she, she had motive, I mean, she, she got me. I mean, what, what am I say? Your daughters are downtown feeding the homeless and I am at home sleeping. That was not acceptable. Not in her book, not mine. So ever since that Saturday, I happy hour less and slept in a lot less. So just, it's, it takes some self-reflection. Is, is there time? Do you have a little bit more? I, I, I know some of y'all come up to me every now and then and say, you know what, I like what you're doing. And I would like to be involved and I just don't know when. I've got stuff all the time. It's, it goes through summer, it goes through winter, it goes through everything. Um, I, uh, I want to thank y'all for listening to my words and, and if it motivates you, come see me. If not, well, just do the insights in here. Thank you.